Hi everyone, welcome back. If this is your first time here, I'm Adam and I design logos and fonts. And today we're going to be looking at a display font that I've been working on as part of the diversity type project. This project was set up by the distillery agency who put out a worldwide invitation asking for people to submit letters to this display font. And that's exactly what happened. We've got lots of characters from all kinds of different people. People of Print, who are a partner on the project, have invited me along to take those characters and build a working font. And that's exactly what I want to show you today. We'll go through a little bit of how it's been built and uh, a few tips and tricks along the way. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your glyphs file for detailed work, because I've seen that there's a few characters that are quite heavily detailed. I'll go through how I clean up vector files in Illustrator ready for glyphs. And then I'll also show you how I clean up glyphs within the glyphs software and correct path directions, which is super important because if your paths are going in different directions, it can cause problems. So with that said, let's take a look. So first of all, we're gonna to want to set up our project in Glyphs. And all I've done is I've opened up a new project and not done anything to it yet. I just wanna simply show you how this reacts without doing anything. So we've got this nice intricate O from Amber Weaver of Fem FemType. If we copy and paste that into glyphs and correct the bounds, we should be able to see the detail that's kind of skewed. So as you can see there, it's no longer square because it's snapping to the points. Just delete that for now. And to correct that, we're going to use the subdivision and take that to 10. And that'll just mean that we've got 10 more um, increments per point. So now if we paste that back in, this now should have a nice square end. And there you go, you can see that's perfectly square. So there you go, that's how we set up the uh, Glyphs project for detailed work. Now let's look at cleaning up vector shapes in Illustrator. So I've got this three that's by Pavanchi Shende. Really cool looking three. I like how it's super fat with some really, really intricate pieces going to an absolute point on the end there. So this has been made up by using several different shapes, but it's also been made with strokes and obviously taking strokes into glyphs app is not gonna render very well. So to fix this, what I'm gonna do is select everything. And then I like to use the flattened transparency. I think that sort of does a slightly better job of uh, creating shapes out of everything. And then I'm just gonna click okay. And we, I'm just gonna want to group everything together as one shape which means that we're then going to use the Unite tool under Pathfinder. And as you can see, everything has been unified or united even. So if we copy that, that should be correct now for glyphs. If we just pop that into the number three, and correct the bounds. I'm going to do a little bit of resizing on this because it's coming huge. And there we go. That's our number three. I really like the contrast on this with the heavy top and bottom with the delicate middle. Cool. So moving on. Oh, 
Okay, so now let's look at cleaning up stray nodes and fixing path direction. So I've got this really nice looking, almost Celtic style A by Joseph Gill. I'm going to copy this and pop it into the letter A. Now we can see that we've got a red dot just up here and what that means is that there's a an overlap between two nodes so if we pull this out you can see that there's two nodes there and obviously we need to get rid of that so the easiest way to do this but it's not always foolproof is to select everything go to paths and tidy up paths and what that should do is figure out what's overlapping and take out anything that's sort of unnecessary, which in this case it has done. So now what we want to do is place it onto the baseline and line it up like that. Just give it a quick check. Yeah, everything looks pretty much as it came from Illustrator. And just for good practice, what I like to do is correct path direction. So that'll then make the paths run in the, in the correct direction. So what you might get is if you've got two, if you've got two parts, say for instance, a square. So this is a square that I've just dropped in. All the paths in this are now running in the correct direction. But if we were to reverse the selected, what you can see there is that it sort of creates a, a white space. It creates a, a void in the middle. And that's because the path directions are running the wrong way. So if we wanted to correct that, again, select everything, paths, and correct path direction. And that should then look at everything as a whole and figure out what's the correct path direction for this. And there you've got your full, um, full glyph. I like to create letters from several sections and having your path directions correct are paramount. If your path directions are wrong, then that can lead to lots of problems further down the line. So once you've got a full set of glyphs in your font, and say for instance two or three glyphs have got your path directions running in the wrong way and you've not corrected them if you've got um, a really really tight kerning where something then overlaps you can end up with voids where that overlap comes on the on the kerning so check your path directions always make sure that you correct them That's it for this video, but in the next video, we're going to go through adding missing glyphs and we're also going to make it a little bit more of a dynamic and diverse font by adding contextual alternatives. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out a little bit more about this project, you can find more info at diversitytype.com. And if you want to find out a little bit more about me, check me out on Instagram. You can check out my website, all the links. So everything are in the description below. So if you like the video, why not like and subscribe? And I suppose all that's left to say is cheers and I'll see you in the next one.